And joining us now is Cook Political Report senior editor David Wasserman. David, you are the guru of the House seats. Have you seen enough? <laughs> well, Andrea, what today comes back to is that Democrats never really started out with a mandate uh, to begin with. And in 2020, Joe Biden took on a historically unpopular president. Trump had a 53 percent disapproval rating, and yet Joe Biden only carried Wisconsin, Arizona, Georgia, Nevada, and Pennsylvania by less than two and a half percent. He only won the median House district by 2.1 percent. And of course, now President Biden is the one with a 53 percent disapproval rating. And so the laws of political gravity are working in Republicans' favor. And I think the likeliest outcome is that Republicans pick up between 15 and 30 House seats and Democrats are hanging on for dear life in the Senate. There's an excellent chance that Republicans hold Pennsylvania and break through in one of Nevada, Arizona, and Georgia today. And what, yeah, what are you seeing? Let's talk a little bit more about the Senate. Where do you see Democrats having the best shot to hold on? Well, I think their route is still in Arizona and Georgia. Uh, and, and Pennsylvania. They've got to hold on to three of, of the four core states, Nevada being the fourth. Uh, I still think Nevada is the likeliest to go Republican out of that bunch. Uh, but Pennsylvania, you know, has, has taken a turn towards Dr. Oz. He has made the race much less about John Fetterman, or mu much less about himself and much more about John Fetterman in the past month and rebranded himself as a moderate in the suburbs of Pennsylvania. And that's paid dividends. And what about the possibility that Josh Shapiro, who's running a very strong gubernatorial race against a real, a really extreme Republican uh, election denier, January 6th protester, all the rest, uh, joined the insurrection through the mob um, and the anti-Semitic extreme language that's come from Mastriano, Doug Mastriano. What about the fact that Josh Shapiro, as a, you know, very far ahead in that race, the Democrat, could pull Fetterman through if there aren't too many ticket splitters? Well, I think there will be quite a few ticket splitters, particularly in those suburbs. And Josh Shapiro has shown you know, a textbook example of how you do confront an election denier as a Democrat. And Katie Hobbs, I think, in Arizona has shown what not to do in kind of shying away from confronting Carrie Lake, uh, whereas Josh Shapiro has confronted Doug Mastriano quite forcefully. Uh, and look, early on election night, I think we'll get some important tea leaves in Virginia, where we have uh, two highly competitive House races in New Hampshire, in the first congressional district, in Indiana's first district. And I'm, what I'm going to be paying attention to early on uh, on election night is whether Republicans are headed for a true majority or, or just a Marjorie. I was talking with Kevin McCarthy yesterday, and he wants more than 25 seats. Anything uh, less than 15, and he'll have a much harder time circumventing the far-right fringe of his conference. David Wasserman, thank you so much.